Hi, uh, we'll wait a few more minutes and then start. Hello. Sorry for coming a bit too late. I wasn't allowed a meeting. Um, no. Right back. Let's wait another three minutes. Just, just. Um. So Kevin, I think you are the, you are you are new here, aren't you? Yes, I am. And where are you coming from? Uh, from? From which company? So I work for Red Hat, you say? Ah, oh, perfect. And before that, I spent four and a half years at Heroku. So I have a lot of experience of um, uh, describing applications to run in containers. Perfect. So, um... Okay. Um, this is this one. And this. Just a second now, I'm, I'm, short, I'm organizing my, my desktop at the moment um, to find out which documents I need where. Um, Omar, I think we have too much documents. Yeah. And um, we'll probably need to move some of them or all of them into the GitHub repo. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know if Jennifer will join us today? Jennifer, I think she said she might not be able to join. Okay. Um, yes, then let's start. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's um, Operator Working Group meeting. Um, yes, today uh, we want to dis uh, discuss how we will proceed with our document. Um, how you can contribute to our um, working group and what, are, what the current topics are. Um, we, uh, we, we are about to change our um, workflow a bit currently. Um, in the last few months, we worked on a Google Doc document and found out that this is not always the perfect way to get such a document. Um, so um, to get such a document done, um, currently, we are about to change everything to a, to a more kid-centric workflow. Um, so um, yesterday, we created a lot of issues um, for uh, which are currently to do in our document, and uh, we are also uh, we are we have um, tried to migrate everything to the CDAP deliveries um, GitHub repository. So um, if you look in the CNCF GitHub repository, there are, uh, sorry, a new, a new one is joining. Hello, Winnie. 
Hi. Hello. Um, you are you are also new here, aren't you? Yeah, this is my first time joining. Okay, perfect. Um, then I'll I'll try to um, I'll try to repeat what it what I said before. Um, welcome to today's operator working group meeting. Um, yes, today we will discuss how we want to proceed with. Uh, we are we are currently creating a um, operator white paper, and uh, we want to discuss how we pr proceed with with the white paper. Um, Omar, Jennifer, and me created a lot of, of GitHub issues for, for this white paper. So everyone is invited to take one issue, or to say he wants to deal with the, with the topic um, and to work on this topic. Um, and we are also trying to get our doc, uh, to edit our document in, in the GitHub repository of the CGAP delivery. Um, so we can discuss uh, discuss changes uh, on pull requests and so on, but not discuss many things um, over, uh, over and over again. Um, yes, current currently there is no no fixed timeline for the for the white paper, but we are working on it at the moment. Um, uh, if we see how many people will contribute now and how, how our progress, uh, how our document gets further. Um, yes, and that's, this was the introduction. Um, at first, how can you contribute? Um, just, just let me share my screen. So, just a second. So this is it, I hope. Um, so I think this, uh, do you see my screen or? I think I've shared the wrong screen. Where is it? This is it. This should, uh, this should be my, my, my browser window. Um, this is the GitHub repository of the CGAP delivery. Um, and now there are a lot of issues um, tagged with operator white paper. And we also um, wrote operator working group in front of them to make sure that um, you see that this, these ones are from us. Um, and we try, uh, in some cases, we try to um, yes, we tried to um, describe what what should what should happen there. If something is insufficient or you need something, uh, don't hesitate to contact Omar, um, Jennifer, or me. Um, and also, if you if you would like to work on an issue which is not already created, um, you can also um, open the issue, open up the issue, and um, we will address it. Um, What's missing in our case at the moment is um, we are we are we don't have really have um, um, articles about the different operator frameworks such as the operator framework itself as Cube Builder as Qdo and so on. So if you know people from these communities which want to join us and would like to contribute to the document. Um, and you are, uh, are more than welcome. Um, currently, um, so um, if you want to, uh, to do uh, to contribute to one of these of these things, um, you can only comment to it. If you want to take a responsibility about one or one or more sections, um, just contact us, and we will uh, we will assign this issue to you. Um, yes, and this was this part. The second part, uh, so this is the, these are the open tasks at the moment. The second thing is um, we have an operator working group space in the, in the CGAP delivery um, repository. Um, there you find all of our meetings, the links to the, the link to the charter, the agenda and meeting notes and so on, but also to the current document of the operator white paper. Um, did any one of you uh, read already the, docu uh, the current white paper? Except of Omar. 
I think you read it more than enough. Um, yes, I read it. Okay. Um, and were there anything unclear to you? Or was the target, uh, the, the goal of the document unclear to you? No, it's, I mean, it's a fairly limited document, but it seemed reasonably okay. okay. Um, Yes, so um, what you can what you can see in the document at the moment is there are, there are lot, lots of to do's um, and we tried to migrate all of these to do's to the to the uh, GitHub issues. Um, and um, at, at first we followed a, an approach where we created um, sections in the document. And afterwards, added this uh, wanted to try add this to a PR and merge this in the uh, app delivery um, um, repository. But we found out that this is a bit of a weird um, process, and therefore we we will try to get anything into Git, and afterwards um, only leave a comment at the white paper that everything is in Git. Um, yes, so to the docu document itself, um, we as a, as a CNCF project want to create the white paper which um, targets on operators, um, obviously, um, but more from a, from a bit of a higher level. So not, not only for Kubernetes and not only for one framework, because um, we think uh, that operators can only exist outside of Kubernetes. So um, this, was, this was the the thing why Omar created a, a section about an operator design pattern. Because when you think about operators or how an operator is structured, um, you could also think of, of Terraform, uh, uh, about Terraform as an operator, because it also has a controller which, which is Terraform itself. Um, it has a custom resource definition or a, a desired state, let's say it this way. Which would be the description of the Terraform, uh, which would be the Terraform script itself, and it has um, an infrastructure where it is applied to, and which it can reconcile. Um, so, in a very basic and abstract way, you can think of, think about that there are operators outside of a Kubernetes landscape. So, what we what we tried to do at the moment was we we were describing how operators work and. The, try to describe this on the basis of, an, of, a Kubernetes, of Kubernetes operators, because these are the only operators that people know at the moment. Um, so this was a thing where we said, yes, we have Kubernetes comp operator components as a controller, a desired state, and um, objects to be watched. And um, yes, we, uh, we, tr we are trying to describe a lot um, and afterwards, we thought about what ca which capabilities could an operator have. So I know that there is currently an uh, operator maturity mod model, um, which says in this phase an operator supports this and this. In the next phase an operator supports um, this and this. And we tried to break this up a bit and say that we don't have a, a maturity model in this. Uh, um, in this way, as it as it is in the in the Red Hat document, but we have capabilities, and um, we could say a, an operator has the capability to install an application. Okay, that's a bit obvious, um, but it can also have the, the capability to manage the backup of an application, which is not as obvious at, uh, as I think, or it could um, deal with auto remediation of the of the, of the underlying service, and so on. So the idea was to um, uh, describe what, uh, how an operator could um, help an end, could help a user, help, could help a user, and which features could be interesting for an operator developer to to implement. And what we what we uh, and afterwards we try to describe what we think about this. Uh, how this should be. So um, one of our known goals is to set standards in the form as an operator which 
supports observe, uh, which supports uh, which has monitoring and matrix and is good good observable uh, must use this endpoint uh, and you and uh, make it uh, and expose it for this software so we want to keep this a bit more open so that the people know um, what they can use uh, or how how such how such things could be dealt with some things we also thought about and i think um this this has also be a, uh, can also be discussed a lot um we had the capability of scaling so that the, uh, that the operator supports the scaling of the application let's think about no uh, master elections or other things but an operator could also um, support the auto scaling of an application in a form that it manages the scaling the scaling but um, what, I, what, I thought, uh, what we found out at, the, uh, at a later, later point, um, that scaling the operator itself could, only be a, could also be a very interesting topic. Um, exact, uh, if you, uh, exactly if you think about watching and uh, remediating um, or reconciling the, the um, Deployments, ports, or whatever this this um, operator is managing. Um, yes, yeah, so um, we had we we defined a lot of cap, uh, lots of capabilities. So if you find another uh, another capability, please only feel free to to discuss this in the Slack group or in a GitHub issue or whatever, um, because I think as as many capabilities we have as as clear it gets for customers or for also for developers what an operator could bring uh, could do for them and afterwards um, we thought about uh, we thought that um, it is fine to know uh, to know what operators are for um, we will get some some best practices and so on but we also think that uh, that the security and um, possible risks of operators are very very um, important. So um, especially, uh, how can a customer ensure that the operator he wants to install um, meets his security requirements? So uh, let's think think about um, signed port, uh, signed contain, signed images, or uh, the openness of the code and so on. Um, but also, how can I, as an operator developer, um, ensure that a customer um, trusts my operator? So, um, which information could I provide to him? Um, think about permissions on the API and so on. And therefore, we also um, try, we are also trying to get the SIG security a bit more in the boat, um, and also also other 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 more security related specialists. So if you uh, if you are more from a security, um, you you have a uh, have a strong security background. You are more than welcome to contribute on this. Um, Yes, and the third thing, third thing in security I forgot was the end user observation. So how can an, how can an end user um, ensure that everything the um, developer said is really true? Okay, um, yes, and now uh, we have some operator frameworks such as um, let's let's describe uh, let's call them the operator framework. Let's call them Kudo, Kopf, Qbeta, and however they um, they are called. And um, therefore, we thought about that it would be very cool if we find some people from the respective um, communities. To describe their approach, because I think not every operator framework has the has the similar approach, uh, and I think this this is also true. Um, and um, to uh, uh, what we want to ensure is that every every uh, every community feels re represented in uh, feels correct that it's correctly represented in this document. Um, Yes, we also thought uh, thought uh, some time about the operator frameworks for non for non Kubernetes platforms. Some called uh, some said Chuchu, that, that's an Ubuntu um, project, I think. 
um, but that's uh, we have we have not too much about this at the moment. Another thing we also have is the operate the lifecycle management. So um, how does the operate itself get managed and so on? Um, yes, and um, what also could be interesting for everyone would be the would be use cases for an operator. So um, this could also be that the section will be a bit more more on the upper of the document. Um, but I think it is very important, especially for users who want to uh, for, uh, developers who want to develop um, operators, which use cases they can manage with this. So, um, uh, which is main, uh, which can be um, ca also covered in the capabilities, but this would be um, special use cases. Um, and what we also want to um, achieve is to get some, some best practices for operators. So um, I think we hear, uh, we, uh, we hear and, lo and read a lot about operators, um, but there is no white paper or anything which um, collects all of these best practices and so on. And this is one, of, uh, one, one other part we want to achieve. So, um, Often there, uh, it's talked. Uh, there's a, uh, operators, uh, an operator of operators mentioned. Um, some people talk about the placement of operators, so that you won't um, uh, won't like to um, operate your workloads and your control processes as operators on the same nodes or node pools. But I think this can be uh, can, can be discussed, and so on. So um, and also, how can I publish an operate an operator, and how can I find it? And after that, um, we would like to outline bit a bit of technical implementation details. So um, how can I write an operator? Or how can I start to write an operator? In this case, it is especially for Kubernetes, that's true. Um, so um, find the framework, find out how an operator works and so on. But also how can I test an operator? Or, um, yes, how could, how could a demo uh, implementation of an operator could look like? So um, I'm not sure if you, if you know it, but there is a demo application in the, in the CDAP delivery, which is used for um, demonstration purposes of deployment mechanisms. And we also thought about describing a, a, um, example operators, not only in the document, but also in the repository um, for, uh, from the CDAP, uh, from our working group. Uh, on top uh, for this for this application and only reference to this in, the, in our document so that everyone who wants to build or uh, uh, use different capabilities has a blueprint on this repository let's say it this way uh, so this this was only also more an idea than um, we would be in the situation that we can implement this at the moment um, yes, and afterwards we will, round, we will sum this up and conclude. Um, additionally, we know that there are a lot of, of books and white papers about operators, and we, we also want to mention them and to give credits to them because I think for some things we've written, written there, um, the source is, is from there. Um, but we also want to ensure that everyone knows why, uh, where our document differs from this. Yes, and afterwards we have a bibliography and after that we can publish it. Um, is there anything in terms of the structure um, missing on your, in your opinion? So also especially not from Oma because he knows the document. No, structurally, I think it's fine. I mean, obviously, there are some minor detail things missing from it. I think to me, one of the things you're probably going to have to standardize on is logging and, and things like that, because clearly you don't want to have to have multiple log formats being parsed. You all of anything that you can reduce your friction with 
is going to make it, but technically, I think the document is structurally fine. You know, I've built a number of operators. Uh, they could probably contribute to some parts of this. Okay. Um, and let's say this way, uh, would anyone like uh, of, of you two, uh, so of Kevin or Winnie, would like to um, contribute to the document or which parts would you like to contribute? That's a good question. Um, I, I guess I could probably write about writing operators using the operator SDK, the, the Go uh, Helm slash uh, thing. I've, I've written a number of Go based operators. so. I'm, um, I could probably, and I think I've actually written a tutorial for some bits of this, so I probably could expand on that or, or shrink it a little bit and, and get something out. Mm -hmm. um, so as we as we currently have no issue for that, could you write an issue what you um, what you would like to propose, um, and I will um, I will take it and as, and assign it to you. I mean, I think the key, the interesting things about it would be to look at it through the lens of the maturity model. You know, and to consider what what basic parts of it get you to the first level, what you need to get to each of the other levels, and and, and kind of build on top of the levels to get to those positions. You know, that's probably how, in, in my because there are already documents about how to take operator SDK and build a really trivial um, operator, but it's that maturity part that's interesting. What does it mean to provide deep insights? What does it mean to provide, I'm trying to remember what the fifth level is, <laughs> like what are those things and how do you actually implement those? Um, just to com come back to the, to the maturity versus cap capability model. Um, what we thought about is that an operator which supports um, auto, -oper uh, sorry, I'm not sure how it looked like. Um, yes, an, an application which um, supports horizontal or vertical scaling. Uh, so an operator which supports horizontal or vertical scaling does not have necessarily to support backup failure or recovery. Yeah. Uh, and this was, this was also the cause why we switched from the maturity model to a more capability-based model. model. Um, but um, Yes, it could. It could all. Uh, it could have also make sense to to um, have 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 such levels to find out how much how mature the, the operator is. But in our terms, we we try to avoid such things. Sure. I'll say that uh, we might want both. So there is the capability model. That's the thing that uh, operator can do. And some operators, for example, don't need to do backups because it's not relevant for them. So it's not a maturity level, it's a capability. But in terms of maturity, uh, we can say an operator has phases of maturity, like security is one, logging and tracing is one, and and like the, the building of the operator that writing of the code has matured. But in terms of capabilities, uh, we have some examples that operator that only creates uh, other objects. So they don't actually need to back up anything external or even not doesn't have to support the vertical scale or, or things like that. I mean, a lot of it is I mean, it's interesting to me, right? So like, I look at an operator as how do you um, automate away your problems, <laughs> right? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis that you would like to not have to do in a, a fail-worthy way? And so like, I look at it as backups. Some services don't require backups, but a huge amount of them do. Um, so, I, you know, I, I would probably shy away from the things that don't need backups in favor of how do you make backups useful? How do you make that level of maturity useful to folks? It doesn't necessarily always mean literally writing a dump to a PV or something like that. There, there's other ways to think about that problem. Yes. Makes sense. So I, I often thought about, uh, think about operators uh, um, 
I, I was I was working as an SRE and uh, infrastructure guy a uh, uh, long long time of my career, and what I'm thinking about is that operators are um, replacing my work. Yes, that's what I think. Um, so that's also what makes them an operator, and not a controller. And um, yes, and what what we what I am trying to be uh, what I. Or what we tried to be uh, to to describe in the capability model was exactly these ta these tasks we did from day to day. So um, ensure that our application is correctly scaled, that it its backups are running, and so on. Yeah. And so for me, things it's it's a lot, you know it's essentially. If you consider what GitOps is, right? So GitOps is operations by Git. Well, it's that operations part that, that's interesting yeah. to me about operations. Anybody who thinks that operations is just deployments probably hasn't done a lot of operations work. And um, there's a myriad of other op things that need to be done by folks to to keep systems running and, and you know operational. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely that's that's the interesting part of in operations. Uh, yeah. You get a lot of people who think it's just uh, deploying things. <laughs> I think that we we don't have it in the docs, but uh, I think Thomas, you you talked about a few times. There was the day one and the day two. I think this was Mark. Yes, Mark. Yeah. Um, day one is installing and wrapping up, and day two is like keeping. The application healthy. Yeah, rolling secrets on a regular basis is yeah. another key thing. That those kinds of, of operations. I mean, I, I I don't have to go far back very far to think about like the kind of operational tasks that were carried out on the services that I've operated. So I think often when people talk about operators, they think about installing an application. Um, but um, to be honest, uh, if I only want to install an application, I, uh, uh, Kubernetes manifest would be enough. And we want to describe which, um, which, which features an operator could also provide to them. And what other main, uh, let's say, um, um, pros of, a, of, a, of an operator. Except it's uh, except it's um, complexity. Makes sense. Okay, Omar, do you have something to add? Um, I want to ask William Kevin. Uh, does everything until now make sense? Do you do you have? Did you have any expectations other than? the things we and me and Thomas and me has talked about so far. No, no, I'm pretty happy with it. And, you know, I'm fairly familiar with the landscape. Uh, you see, I've built out a lot of chilling to do some of these things already. Um, so shifting it into into, into operators and, and Kube isn't really much of a change. So we need, um, did you have some expectations of the operator working group or? Uh, no, so I've been writing operator using QBuilder and I just saw this, I, uh, I was just curious how other people are writing operator and uh, so this working group seems interesting. So I, I'll go and read the white paper. It is also very interesting, our working group. Um, so um, if I understood this right, you, you did not write, write Cuban, uh, uh, very much operators. Uh, no, in, in my team, we are, we are writing operators. We are actually writing man, many controllers using Cube Builder. OK, um, then I understood this fault. <laughs> yeah. And have you made any um, any experiences with operators you would like to share with the community? 
or are there any problems you are dealing with um, which we should cover? Um, I need to think about it. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we also want to, tr to make this document for the, for the community and not for us. So if someone of you finds problems um, in the real world or uh, uh, makes um, findings which we should share with the community, um, just, uh, just let's discuss it in the Slack channel. Uh, also, you can, uh, you can always feel free to write an issue for that. Um, I think you're muted. Yeah, yeah, sounds sounds great. Uh, yeah, I think this is a very interesting work. So, yeah, let me let me go back and read the white paper and see where I can contribute. This would be very very perfect. Okay. Um, so, anyone uh, does anyone have something to add? Okay. Um, so then I'll give you some minutes back. Um, thank you for joining the today's uh, working group meeting. Um, I think the next working group meeting will be in about two weeks. Um, if it's not in the, in the CNCI calendar at the moment, I will I'll let it let it uh, let it uh, let edit. Sorry, um, English is not my native language. Um, um, and. I think it would be really cool if you could join us and contribute to the document. And um, if you have any questions or um, expectations or um, um, proposals or whatever, just feel free to contact us. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Well... Wow.